I'm John White. Believe it or not, it snowed in southern New Mexico, and we're indoors today. So we kind of had to retreat and find an indoor spot. With me is Larry Dixon. Larry is a master gardener here in Doniana County. And uh, Larry, on this kind of snowy, chilly day, uh, what have you what have you brought? Well, John, I've got some samples from uh, people around around town, around the area that uh, brought different places. Uh, what I have here first, John, is a screw bean mesquite that seems to have some unusual growth coming out of it. It's still green, whereas the rest of the plant has kind of gone dormant for the season. Uh, whatever this is, doesn't look like it's part of the original plant. Okay. Well, what we have is uh, mistletoe. In, uh, in the southern part of the state, the true mistletoe is pretty common on a lot of our cottonwoods and poplars, and once in a while you'll see them in some mesquites and ash and some other trees, but um, this one has gotten started on the screw bean mesquite. It uh, is a parasitic plant, so it uh, grows its roots right on into the tissue of the plant and gets its, basically its moisture from the mother plant, and then it does develop leaves, and it will manufacture its own food through photosynthesis, but um, um, probably the best control for this is to prune it out. There is a product called Florel that uh, is sold for mistletoe and can be used. It's kind of a uh, growth regulator and uh, kind of works on it that way. But um, if you can catch it early enough where they're just starting to come out and keep it clipped off, you can probably do a pretty good job of keeping it keeping it off. But since screw bean mesquite is uh, popular with wildlife, then um, birds will always be bringing in seed off of different things, and so we'll we'll see that. Uh, of interest, uh, some of the people that don't know what a screw bean mesquite is, this is the uh, uh, seed pod on the screw bean mesquite. It's a kind of a medium-sized tree that's found a lot in the river areas, uh, river valleys, uh, here in at least the southern part of the state that uh, um, has a lot smaller leaflets on it than our typical um, Texas honey mesquite. and and, uh, but it has this real unique seed pot on it, so it's very, very easy to distinguish when you, when you see those. So um, that's an interesting plant. Well, yeah, this branch here that was cut off a neighboring tree looks rather large. Is this a condition that's going to uh, kill the, the host plant uh, at some point in time? Or? Okay, mistletoe, since it does derive moisture from the host plant, it does weaken it to some extent. It won't just kill it outright, but uh, it does take the moisture away from it, and as more mistletoe grows and develops in the plant, then the more moisture it takes away from the host plant, so it weakens it, and maybe, you know, uh, borers or something else may move in on it. I see. Okay, what else do you have? Well, I've got an unusual twig here that has this little growth on it. Uh, Someone said they thought it was some kind of gall or mildewy thing because there are some little white areas on here. I think I know what it is, but why don't you enlighten us? <laughs> All right. Now this is a uh, praying mantis or praying mantid uh, egg case, and um, we see these a lot on some of our uh, shrubs and trees around the yards, and uh, especially when they're dormant and the leaves are off of them, they're much easier to see. They might have been there all throughout the season, but now that the uh, leaves are off, they, they kind of are spotted a lot easier. But these are good guys. We do want to leave those on there, so we don't want to be breaking them off, and, and we just want to leave them there and let the mantids go ahead and, and uh, hatch out of there and, and uh, go after some of our uh, more destructive insect pests. Very good. So uh, that's, uh, that's one that we'd like to keep around the yard, so okay. uh, that's a good plant to do. So, Okay, well, Larry, you yeah, have uh, I've got another specimen here. Someone brought in just this morning, digging up their winter carrots. Okay. And up came this creation. Wow. <laughs> that's the granddaddy of all carrots there. Well, yeah, I didn't know if it was radioactive or what might be wrong with it. <laughs> Uh, specimen, but it is uh, most unique and supposedly uh, derived from one plant. Yeah. 
Yeah. That is quite unique. Um, that has gone through some kind of um, malformation there, maybe uh, possibly insect uh, induced. It's uh, hard to say. I don't see any really any um, nematode galls on the outside of it, but there's there must be something that irritated some tissue and really yeah. really got it growing weird but um and of course this came uh, supposedly from about three feet away from uh, a peach tree and somebody was wondering if maybe the peach tree is doing this underground or if they plant something back over top this area what what may develop it uh, well the peaches tell them to go ahead and plant something different and keep us posted okay. well the peaches are uh, very nematode prone so it could be possible there is a nematode problem there but um, that's common oddity that we see so it, it may be insect induced. Well Larry thank you very much for being on Southwest Yard and Garden. Very good. Pleasure being here. <laughs>